How's it going guys? This is Alvor, back once again with another video. Now, Fallout 76 has been out for a good long time, and I've learned a lot about it over the course of the year that it's been out, such as where to find power armor, the best route for getting XP, the best way to get legendaries, the best places to find all the different materials you could need. So for today's video, I thought I'd focus on the XP. Now, this also doubles up as the best way to get legendaries, even if it just ends up being script for Murgle or whatever her name is. Now before we get started, you should probably keep in mind that to do this run, you're probably going to need one set of power armor and at least five or six fusion cores, because we're going to be dealing with a lot of zombies, and without the power armor, they're going to be inflicting a lot of rads. Now before we start the run, it helps to optimize your character's XP gain by doing a few of the following things. So first of all, you want to make sure that your character has got the inspirational perk at level 3 equipped, giving you another 15% XP gain. Then make sure that you've had a sleep recently, giving you an additional 5%, taking it up to 20. And thirdly, you'll want to either have some squirrel stew or some cranberry relish. Either way, it'll give you an additional 10%, giving you a combined total of 30%. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it certainly helps when you're at higher levels. I like to call this route the XP speedboat and you'll see why at the end, but for now we're going to start off right here at White Springs. My highest level character is this guy right here, so since he's at 190 and it's probably going to take quite a while just to get those extra 10 levels to 200, I thought this would be a good opportunity to both level him up and show you guys one of the best ways to gain XP at the same time. There are two ways to do this. You can either just start off at the golf course and then just keep popping servers over and over at the golf course, but I like to play on private servers, so I'm going to do the full route. So suit up and let's smash some zombie skulls. But if this video was to play at normal speed, it would probably take literally hours. So I'm going to do all of these runs in the form of a time lapse and let's go. So once you're done at White Springs and everything squishy is now laying in an even squishier pile on the floor, it's time to move southwest down here to the Charleston Capitol building. And there are two buildings here. There's the main unit with the higher level zombies in it, and the one across the way with the lower level scorched in it. But we are 100% pro, so we're not going to bother with that lobby trash. So we're just gonna go right on into the main building, take a right, and start squishing even more zombies. So once everything in here is dead, you want to go to your map and head down here to the southeast to the ash heap entrance of the Big Ben Tunnel. Now here power armor is optional, but since if you look at my health I don't exactly have a lot being as I'm a bloody build, we're just going to keep that on for now.
Now once you make it out the other end here, if you wait a few seconds, a large cluster of Scorched is probably going to spawn. So pro tip, get ready with some grenades. After that, it's going to be super tempting to just head straight forward and go to the very nearby NAR repair yard. But if you do, you're probably just going to have to backtrack anyways. So we're going to head slightly north and go straight to the BOS base up at the asylum. And here there'll definitely be about a half a million zombies, so power armor at the ready. Once you're done smashing skulls here, it's time to head back south to the NAR repair yard where you could encounter super mutants, scorched, zombies, gulpers, or even sheep squatch. So dispose of whatever comes your way, and while you're there, don't forget to grab the plan on the table inside the hangar to the left. And after you've made quick work of that, turn around and head towards Watoga to the railings there where you'll find about three assaultrons to kill. And from here on out, it's robot slaughter all the way through Watoka. Sorry, Robco. Once Watoga is nothing more than a desolate city of scrap metal and spare parts, it's time to head way to the east and into Glass Cavern. Once you arrive here from quick travelling, there'll probably be anywhere between one and like six Scorch Beasts to deal with, as well as a small army of Scorched. But hey, all the merrier for the XP. Once everything here is dead, wade your way through a giant pile of bat wings and try not to eat anything, you might catch something, and then let's drop down and go into Glass Cavern. In here it's just more Scorched and one Scorched Beast at the end, so power armor optional, but there are a few mile kings along the way that can be annoying. Done defeating the Scorch Beast. If you're on the BOS quest line and doing the Belly of the Beast quest, don't forget to activate the beacon next to the body, loot the body, and you can pick up your quest item as well as maybe get a rare combat helmet. Once you've decimated everything in the bowels of this cave, like your Nando's meal the morning after, it's time to head way up north to the Robco building. 
And when you get here, you may or may not trigger the AWOL Armaments event. If you do, all the better. Definitely a good event, so give it a shot. That, it's time to head indoors and destroy many, many years of Robco's hard research and work. Enjoy! So once you've destroyed so many robots that you're pretty sure you can hear Robco screaming at you. I interrupt this broadcast to tell Alpha to stop blowing holes in my goddamn robots. That is all. It's time to move on to the west, to West Tech, and go kill some orcs. you're done killing about half of Sauron's army, you'll make it to this door here, which due to a bug in the game, I mean feature by Bethesda, means that you'll probably crash and have to reload the game. So we can call this the Mordor or possibly Gandalf, but either way it's quite likely So once Gandalf has had his coffee calmed down and finally decided to let you in, head straight across the lobby and down the first corridor to the left and deal with the rest of Sauron's army. So once all the orcs are dead, Gollum's been vanquished and the ring's been cast into the nearest pool of lava, or in this case, green acid or whatever it is, feel free to celebrate it with your friends. You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. And then it's time to move on northeast to Sugar Grove. Now this run should be very quick and easy, you should just breeze straight through it, and it's also one of the best places to go to if you want to farm some springs. And then once you've cleared this place out and left it emptier than the toilet roll aisle at your local Costco's right now, it's time to continue our journey to the northeast to the burrows at Harper's Ferry. So once you're here, just head through this grill down into the sewers, suit up, and now it's time to take sweet vengeance on all the toilet roll hoarding bastards that live down here. Once you've finished sanitizing the sewers, it's time to head on west to Missile Silo Alpha and prepare to drop a nuke. I say we take off and nuke the entire site for Morbid. It's the only way to be sure.
Now so far everything's just been a run around anywhere you want to kill anything that moves. But here you'll actually need to know what you're doing a little bit. So for the uninitiated or silo virgins, I'll give you a brief guide. So before you go in here you need to make sure you've got a few things with you. Firstly, a set of power armor along with a few fusion cores, that always helps against the radiation. Secondly, at least one key card from a cargo bot. And thirdly, some up-to-date codes for the corresponding silo that you found on the internet. So first things first, head down the elevator, straight through the door, take a left and then a right, down the corridor, to the left at the end, look to your right and take a nice refreshing needle shower. Once you're done with that, search around anywhere and everywhere for the nearest blue card you can find. Take it to the room to the right of the first door, use the slot next to the screen to erase it, go into the screen, fabricate your ID, then take it to the room to the left of the first door and swipe it to gain access to the silo. Once you're in the reactor room, go over to the terminal and shut down the reactors. Then as quickly as you can, run around the room fixing all the pipes. And once you've fixed up the last pipe, run back to the terminal to reactivate the system to open the next door. Once you get to the room with the laser grid over the door, it's time to start smashing as many machines as you can find. A few shotgun blasts used to be all it took to destroy them. Unfortunately they patched that out, but you can still destroy everything with a few grenades. Once all of the mainframe cores are destroyed, head through the underpass and through the next room into the warehouse. Here there'll be a sentry bot you'll want to destroy as quickly as possible and don't forget to watch out for the explosion afterwards. Now run over to the console, remove all of the damaged mainframe cores, and then you can either search around for fresh ones to replace them, go over to the tinker bench and repair them to replace them, or if you're really prepared, you've still got some in your inventory from last silo run, and you can just straight away replace them using those. With that done, head on upstairs and into the final room, clear out anything that moves, Go to the terminal upstairs and initiate the launch prep. And now to make this bit nice and simple, most of the robots that come into the room get in there the same way you did. So if you just stand in this doorway here and kill anything that moves until the time runs out, that'll be the job done. So now all that's left to do is use the key card, use the code you got from the internet, and choose where you want to nuke. And there you go, that's the whole silo done in probably 10-15 to 15 minutes. And in this example we're going to be nuking White Springs where we began this XP run. And as you can see it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. And the temptation is often to head straight there, but if you do, although you'll get a real nice show when the nuke drops, you'll more often than not find that there's little to no mobs whatsoever. And if you're doing it on a public server, the place will be absolutely overrun with morons and assholes. So instead, we're going to head up to the top of the world and go kill some stuff there and then come back to that. Now this one's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. Could be mole miners, could be scorched, could be super mutants, who knows, maybe all three. Either way, you should be able to plow through them pretty quick and easy. So let's go.
So once we're all wrapped up killing mobs here, white springs should be good and primed and overflowing with glowing green mobs to kill. So let's head on down there and finish up this XP run where we started. As far as prep work for this area goes, I'd suggest just make sure that all of your weapons and armor are nice and repaired. Make sure you've got a good supply of fusion cores and right away, and you should be able to do a full run of the area without any interruptions. So once that's all done, the radiation has cleared, the dust has settled, and White Springs is just a giant field of squishy red meat piles and flies. That's your entire XP run done, and you should now have a good amount of XP in levels behind you. So now, if we go to the map and take a look at all of the places we've just been to, you'll see that the route looks a little something like this. So with a little imagination, you can see why I call this the Speedboat Speedrun. And hopefully this shape here should also make the route nice and easy for you to remember. And as a quick note, during the speedrun that we just did, the only event that popped up for us was AWOL Armaments up at the Robco building, but all these little yellow dots here mark specific events that are also really good for XP, so if they pop up while you're doing your run, then you'll get even more XP out of it. So there we go, that's the full run done. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Try the route out for yourself, have fun, and spend all your new perk points wisely. Catch you all in the next one guys, and I'm out of here. But wait, there's more.